I feel like I learned a valuable lesson. Not liking rigid denim is not a personal failing. Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel, which is all about sewing and styling a handmade wardrobe. Today's video is going to be a review of the Closet Core Morgan Jeans. This video is in collaboration with Cherie of Cherie Thomas, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about Cherie in just a moment. So why did I want to make this pattern? Now I've made the Morgan jeans before, actually two times, and this was back in an earlier stint of my sewing journey, probably around 2017, and I made a lot of different jeans patterns at that time, and I did make the Morgans twice. I have a fair amount of experience with sewing jeans now, and so the process of sewing isn't really scary to me anymore, but the fit part is what makes it difficult for me. And at the time in 2017, when I made those pairs of jeans, I got through the sewing process just fine, but the fitting was not good, and the neither pair that I made fit me. I made one pair that didn't fit very well at all, and then I tried to make some adjustments and make a second pair, and that second pair still didn't fit me very well. So I do not have either of those jeans in my wardrobe anymore, and so I decided I wanted to give the pattern another try because I've been watching Cherie's channel for a few years now, and she's one of my favorites. I just really like her personality. Like, I don't actually know her because she lives on the opposite side of the country from me, but it just feels like when I watch her videos that she would be the kind of person that I would go out to brunch with and gossip about all of the people that we both know, and she just seems really fun. And so I've been wanting to do a collaboration with her for a while. I was watching one of her haul videos and she mentioned that she's really been wanting to sew some pants and she had bought herself the Morgan jeans pattern. So I decided that that would be a great time for me to revisit that pattern for myself. And because Cherie and I have really different body types, it would be fun to make the jeans together and see how the process and the fit goes for each of us. And hopefully it would be helpful to you guys. So the pattern description states, inspired by old school denim, but with a fresh modern cut, Morgan jeans are a classic five pocket jean designed for non-stretch denim. Featuring a mid-rise contoured waistband, tapered leg and button fly, Morgan fits snugly through the hip but relaxes and conforms to your curves with a little wear. Size up for a slouchier, more casual fit. Choose between a regular or cropped inseam and add an optional leather waistband patch. The pattern sizing for this comes in zero to 20. Now, unfortunately, this pattern has not been extended up to the larger size band. I'm sure that they're still working on it, but as of right now when I'm filming this, the Morgan jeans are only available in the smaller sizes. I made a size zero in the waist and graded to a size four at the hip, and then I graded to an eight at the thigh, and then actually to a 10 in the calf. And I will explain more about my sizing choices um, a little bit later. So how were the instructions? I thought the instructions were super clear, very easy to follow. I did not have any issues. The button fly went together really easily. At this point, I've done both zippers and button flies, and I don't really prefer the look of one or the other. I think maybe with sewing, I might prefer the button fly just because I find that trying to sew over the metal zipper can be a little bit scary. And so, I mean, I've done it a few times and I'm not that worried about it, but I suppose if I had to choose, I do think the button fly is a little bit less scary. So maybe I prefer that. What were my likes and dislikes about the pattern? So I do like the styling of the jeans, although back in the day when the pattern was released, they were calling it a boyfriend style. I would call it in modern terms, more of a slim straight, where it's still pretty tapered and slim in the leg, but it's not super tight. It's definitely not a skinny jean. I think that this cut is really versatile and it's pretty flattering. And I do really like the style and the shape of the jean. What I do not like about the pattern is that in my mind, it is not mid-rise, it is low-rise. I definitely found that out the first time I made these jeans, they came up a, few, a couple of inches below my belly button, which is just way too low for my taste, even back then when I was wearing lower rise pants. So for this pair, I knew that I was gonna to want to correct that, and so I increased the rise by two inches so that it would sit pretty much at my belly button. I personally consider that to be a mid-rise jean because it doesn't sit above my belly button. That's what I would call a high rise. So in my opinion, even though it's labeled mid-rise, I don't think it actually is. I think it's more of a low rise. So the fabric that I used is a Mind the Maker denim. It's a blend of cotton poly and it is a non-stretch denim. It is a washed denim, so it's a little bit softer. It's not super stiff. It was very easy to work with. It's a 10 ounce weight, so a kind of a medium to heavy weight. I bought the fabric a couple of years ago from DNH Fabrics. It's a really wonderful quality. I actually already used the same fabric to make my Simplicity shirt jacket, which I absolutely love. So I knew that I was gonna like the fabric. 
And I really like this classic dark indigo. Up until this point, I did not have a classic dark wash pair of jeans. Most of my jeans are a medium wash or a lighter wash. So it's nice to be able to add that dark wash to my wardrobe because I do think it looks a little bit dressier and it's maybe more appropriate for things like wearing to work and that sort of thing. So let's talk about my pattern alterations and my design changes. So first of all, I'm four foot nine, I'm really short. So I did the cropped inseam and then I had to shorten the legs. I think I ended up shortening them by three inches and the legs now hit right at my ankle bone. Now I do like that length for being able to wear it all year round. I had some ideas for maybe making another pair of these that would be more of a spring and summer thing. And if I did that, I think I might actually shorten the legs maybe just one more inch so that it sits a little bit above my ankle. But if I'm gonna be wearing these jeans in the winter time, I definitely do not want my ankles to show. So I went ahead and kept them a little bit longer and I do like that length a lot. Now let's talk about all that grading between sizes. So the pattern is nice because it gives you finished garment measurements for quite a few different levels on your body. So I was able to measure and compare against my own body to what the pattern says, and that's why I did so much grading. I knew that I would need more room in the thighs, and I definitely was gonna need more room in the calves, and really happy with the fit of those two areas. Now where I went wrong with my grading was with the waist. So I am not a size zero waist. I think in the size chart, um, my waist was actually supposed to be like a size six, I believe. But because I was raising up the waistline to be two inches above where it was meant to be, that means that it sat up a little bit higher on my body. And so therefore the waist needed to be a little bit narrower than what the pattern would have said. However, I made it too small. So doing a little bit of measuring, and if I had to guess, I really could have used another inch in the waistline to make it super comfortable. I have gotten these jeans to the point where I can wear them, but they are a little bit tight in the waist. The first time I wore them, I actually wore them to the office, and right after lunch, I ended up having to unbutton the top button because it was just so tight and uncomfortable, I just couldn't stand keeping it buttoned anymore. Now, because this is a non-stretch denim, it does stretch out with wear, it doesn't really bounce back. And so what I did was I forced myself to wear these jeans pretty much any time I felt like wearing jeans, I made myself put these jeans on so that I could stretch them out and break them in basically. I'm a little bit lucky in that I had a pair of ready to wear jeans a few years back from Everlane that had a very similar situation that when I first put them on, they were super tight in the waist, like so uncomfortable, but the more that I wore them, the more that they stretched out. And so I felt confident that I could just keep wearing these jeans and eventually the waistline would stretch out enough to the point where they were comfortable to wear. I would say at this point, I've actually worn these jeans probably four or five times since I finished them without washing. And like I said, they have gotten to the point where I can wear them relatively comfortably, but by the end of the day, I will admit that I'm still ready to take them off. They are still a little bit tight in the waist, not ideal, but not terrible either. Now, would I sew this pattern again and would I recommend it to others? I would sew it again, but I would use a stretch denim. I think what this experience has taught me is that I don't really like non-stretch denim and that is okay. I don't know why I had this feeling in my head. I think maybe because non-stretch denim is fairly popular right now, but I would always hear people say that, you know, you buy a pair of non-stretch denim and you, they're really uncomfortable at first, but then you stretch them out and they mold to your body and it's the most comfortable pair of jeans you ever owned. And maybe that's true for some people, but I think for me, I just prefer the comfort and the bounce back of the stretch. I think that that's just just more my style and it's more in line with what works for my body. So I think from now on, I'm just gonna stick to stretch denim and not bother with non-stretch denim. Now, as far as making these jeans again, I, like I said, I did do some measurements and I think that if I use a stretch denim with this exact same pattern without doing any modifications, that it'll actually work really perfectly if I use a denim that has a 15 to 20% stretch. So I'm actually really excited to sew these again. I think I might make them out of a white denim that's in my stash and then have that for my spring and summer pair, make them a little bit shorter so that my ankle shows. And I think that that would be the perfect pair of slim straight jeans that I can wear in the summertime. So I don't have any current plans to sew those up right away, but it's something that I would like to do when it gets warmer. Besides the fit in the waist, I am very happy with the fit that I got on the jeans otherwise. I think that it looks pretty good. Of course, it's not perfect, but I've kind of given up on perfection. For me, I think that if I can get good enough and to the point where nobody's gonna notice that I'm wearing homemade jeans, it just looks like any other pair of jeans, then in my book, that is a success. 
So I'm gonna call these a success even though they don't fit perfectly. I do think that I will wear them. My current plan is to wear these as much as possible in between washes because I'm a little bit concerned that when I wash these jeans that the waistline might shrink up again. Now I don't dry my clothes in the dryer. I always lay them flat to dry. So they shouldn't shrink up too much, but just in case, I'm gonna try as much as possible not to wash these jeans. For the styling in this clip, I wanted to keep it pretty simple so you could see the details of the jeans. So I have on one of my new striped merino jerseys that I just tucked into the jeans along with my Hampton jean jacket. I do like the double denim on denim, especially because there are two different tones. I think that it makes a really cute look. I really like that contrast. And then I finished the look with my Nisolo ankle boots. I do really like the way that these boots look tucked into the hems of the jeans because I think that it makes a nice clean finish and you don't see my socks. So I would like to give a big thanks to Cherie for agreeing to collaborate with me. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. Make sure that you watch Cherie's video next. And if you can't get enough of jeans making, check out my review of the Megan Nielsen Ash and Dawn jeans. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.